Good morning, everyone. My name is Molly, and I'm delighted to welcome you to today's Creature Feature, Heroes and Hogs in Ancient Greece. Creature Feature is an online series from the Harvard Art Museums that offers families a chance to discover magical creatures across the collection through close looking with museum staff. This is our first creature feature of the spring semester, um, and they will continue to take place on the first Saturday of each month at 10 on Zoom. Before we begin, I wanna acknowledge that Harvard University is situated on the traditional and ancestral territory of the Massachusetts people, and we strive to honor this relationship. Um, and today we will get a chance to learn about hogs and heroes by looking together at works of art from ancient Greece. You'll meet my friend, Sarah, who you can see here on screen in just a minute. Um, but first, I wanna ask you to find the chat box, which you should be able to see at the bottom of your screen. So if you open that box during our time together, Sarah will ask you questions about what you see or think or notice, and we'll ask you to share your answers here in the chat. You may have to ask an adult for help typing your answers in the chat box, um, or if you're watching with someone else, you can also uh, tell them to the person that you're watching with um, and have a bit of a conversation as we discuss together. Um, I, I'll be here to read the answers aloud as we go, and we'll also keep track of any questions that you might have um, so we can try to answer these at the end if we have some extra time. Um, and one final note, I'll just ask that you check that you're chatting to all panelists and attendees, and this will allow everybody who's joined us this morning to see your answers. And you can adjust this by clicking the little drop down arrow, which is in the chat box next to the to field. Um, so with logistics aside, I'm now going to turn things over to Sarah um, so we can start exploring. Thanks, Molly, and welcome, everyone. I'm so glad you all are here with us today. Um, my name is Sarah Eisen, and I study uh, Greek and Roman archaeology at Harvard, and I'm also a curatorial intern at the Harvard Art Museums in the Division of Asian and Mediterranean Art. I'm so excited to join you today as we explore wild boars and the domesticated pig in ancient Greek life. But before we begin our journey with objects today, I have a question for you that I'm eager to hear. Have you ever seen a wild boar in real life? Have you ever seen a pig in real life? And you can go ahead and write your answers in the chat. And if you have seen them, go ahead and let us know where you've seen them. A range of answers coming in in the chat. Um, some folks have seen a wild boar at a zoo. Um, some folks have seen a wild boar in Italy um, and seen pigs and perhaps a boar at a farm. That's really fun. I'm glad everyone has, or maybe some people have had the opportunity to see these two uh, closely related animals. Wild boars do still exist today um, outside of zoos uh, in parts of Europe, such as the Black Forest in Germany and the Alps, um, as well as in many tropical regions today. Um, but in ancient times, they were much more widespread and they lived all across North America and Europe as well. Um, so let's take a look at our main character and our starting image for today, this boar figurine. A boar is basically a bigger, more ferocious and tusked version of a pig. This boar with its sharp tusks can often attack people if provoked as well. But this figurine was made in Greece in the sixth century BCE. So that's over 2,500 years ago. It is made out of the metal bronze and the bronze appears green to us today because the object is so old and so the color changes or tarnishes over time. But in ancient times, it probably would have appeared more copper in color or maybe even golden in color. Uh, this figurine was likely also painted in the ancient world um, with colors such as 
red, although this pigment no longer survives today. It flakes off the object over time and this object is really, really old. <laughs> This boar was likely once part of a larger group of figurines that may have also included human hunters. And as we will see today, hunting wild boars was an activity that ancient Greek men and heroes participated in in order to prove how brave and how strong they were. So let's all together take a very close look at this animal. What features do you notice? What body parts stand out to you? And go ahead and write your answers in the chat. Some great answers coming in. Um, the tusks, the mane, he has a big snout. It looks like it's in motion, perhaps the legs moving aggressively. Um, some folks are noticing hooves um, and that distinctive nose. Also the main, that the mane is on the front and the back and perhaps looks like the top of a Greek helmet. Um, and a, uh, one final thing, uh, a fierce expression. Yeah, these are amazing observations, everyone. So it does have this very distinct snout and you can see its tusk is coming out if you follow my cursor on the screen. Um, it's kind of like in a crouching, pouncing position. It kind of looks like it's about to attack someone. And it has these very distinctive bristles coming off of its back. And I'm so glad that you all noticed this because these distinctive bristles are an artistic convention of how we can identify that a boar is wild and therefore dangerous. So as we see other images of boars today, keep an eye out for all of these um, characteristics that you wonderfully pointed out. So this boar is located on the third floor in the Harvard Art Museum. And even though the boar is filled with detail, um, as you all just pointed out, you can see that the figurine is rather small and could easily be held in your two hands. However, because the boar is made out of metal, it's made out of bronze, it's very heavy for its small size. So as we said before, the figurine was made in ancient Greece. So let's get located in space. You can see the Harvard Art Museum on the map. Uh, the Harvard Art Museum in Massachusetts, indicated by the purple star. And if we jump all the way over the Atlantic Ocean, you'll see the modern country of Greece, as indicated by the red star. So Greece is where this boar was initially made. And we'll zoom in closer to Greece and take a better look. The country of Greece is on the red circle on the map, and it's part of Southern Europe. <clears throat> the country has a very rocky landscape with many mountain ranges, and while Greece is very hot in the summer, it can also see snow in the winter, especially in the mountains. In ancient times, there were also several wooded forests throughout Greece, although many of these forest lands no longer exist today. The wild boar would live in the forests and the mountains. As you can see from the map, Greece is bordered on most sides of its coast by the Mediterranean Sea. Several islands dot the coastline of Greece, as well as fill the Aegean Sea directly to the east or to the right of Greece. Because of this, the ancient Greeks were a seafaring population, using the islands as stopping points and trade posts for their ships. They traded many goods, including olive oil and wine and painted pottery. And many of this pottery still survives today. And it's recognizable by its distinct black and orange coloring. This pottery is often decorated with images of Greece's mythological heroes and gods. In Greece, a hero is someone who travels all around the world performing incredible feats of strength and bravery in order to gain fame. These adventures of the heroes were recorded by ancient authors and storytellers. Uh, and these authors would track the heroes' successes and sometimes even their failures. So let's take a look at an image of a Greek hero painted onto one of these pots. 
This is the hero Heracles. Heracles is probably the most famous of all the Greek heroes, and we will follow him today on his journey. You may know him by his Roman name, Hercules. On the screen, you can see a picture painted onto a clay pot and the recognizable black and orange colors. We see Heracles on the left. My cursor is circling him here. And a large bull on the right with a tree in the background. Let's zoom in a little closer on the hero. So this is the same pot just zoomed in on Heracles. You can see that the hero holds a spiked weapon, a spiked club in his hand, and he's also wearing a lion skin as armor. So this is his face, and you may be able to see the jaws of the lion open up to frame his head. Keep an eye out for the lion skin in upcoming images of the hero because this is one way we can identify Heracles in pictures. In order to gain everlasting fame, Heracles has to perform 12 demanding tasks. A king assigns Heracles these tasks and makes sure he completes them. These come to be known as the 12 labors of Heracles. And these tasks and labors were often painted on pots as we see here. During these labors, Heracles has to fight all sorts of ferocious and mythological creatures in order to prove he's worthy of being a hero. And one of these uh, animals is a wild boar. This is his fourth quest and he has to fight and tame a giant boar, which was reported to be a vast weight and strength and the boar destroyed all the crops and the fields wherever it ran and rampaged. But an ancient writer tells us that Heracles scared the boar by letting out a huge shout, a huge cry. And he chased the boar from a clump of trees and forced it into heavy snow until it weakened. And then Heracles trapped the boar. So we see this on two pots and let's take a look at the image on the left. We see Heracles here on the left, he's sort of bent over and he's putting all of his weight into wrestling with the boar, uh, sort of indicating that he's having a little bit of trouble taming such a big creature. And you may be able to see the boar's distinctive snout and even his bristles sticking up out of his back here if you follow my cursor. And on the left, we see the same thing. We see a huge boar and Heracles is this image on the left again. If you look really closely, you may be able to get the paws of the lion skin framing his head. Um, and Heracles is struggling so much here that he has to call in his friend for help, um, showing us that, you know, even a mighty hero sometimes needs assistance with a difficult task. After Heracles tames the boar, the Greek hero brings the boar back to the king to prove that he succeeded in his quest. But the king is so scared of the boar because it's so big and ferocious, he jumps into a pot to hide. So you can see him, oh no, I'm so scared, <laughs> take it away. Um, uh, can you see Heracles' lion skin in this image of the hero? Take a look at the boar that he carries on his shoulder and look how big it is. Do you think this is an artistic exaggeration? Can you guess how big wild boars are in real life? Type into the chat a modern object comparison, for example, a shoe or car or any other object that you think is similar in size to a wild boar. A horse, a mini cooper, a big TV, a mastiff dog, a car, a pig, as big as a big dog, a small car, a day bed, lots of incredible guesses to help us think about scale. Yeah, these are great. So of course, like any living being, animals can vary in size, but a full grown boar can be up to and over 250 pounds. Um, and they can be as big or bigger than a full grown human, which is pretty big. So if you've never seen a wild boar before, here's an image of a boar with her two little babies. And maybe you can see 
some of her bristles popping out of her back. And then for scale, we can place the boar right next to a human. Um, so yeah, they can get pretty big. Um, I don't know if I would want to run into a boar in real life. Um, so really showing how brave these heroes are to go up against these boars. Hunting boars is a task that young boys in ancient Greece completed in order to become men. It became a rite of passage or an important moment in that person's life. Boys tried to emulate heroes like Heracles and a successful boar hunt was often used to showcase their strength and their maturity. While a mighty hero like Heracles may be able to hunt a wild boar on his own, mortal men would hunt for boars in large groups. And often with the aid of hunting dogs, as well as weapons, including bronze and iron spears and the bow and arrow. If you look closely at this image, you may be able to see arrows sticking out of the boar's hide. Um, so if you follow my cursor, here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's four arrows sticking into the boar. However, this boar does not really seem affected at all, and it's still charging ferociously at the hunters who have to attack him in groups and from all sides. The boar even unfortunately seems to trample over um, a defeated man, oh no, and a poor hunting dog, which is very sad. So we can see from this painting just how dangerous fighting wild boars was. Another famous Greek hero, Odysseus, also took part in such a hunt when he was a youth. Odysseus is best known for his bravery and intelligence while he was fighting for the Greeks in the mythological Trojan War. In order to breach the enemy's walls, he and his fellow soldiers built a massive horse sculpture and hid inside. Their enemies, the Trojans, were deceived by this horse, thinking that it was an offering to the gods, and the Trojans brought the horse inside their city. Later at night, the Greeks snuck out of the horse and were able to win the war. And if you look closely on this vessel, you can see the Greeks are peeking out of little windows in the horse. However, long before Odysseus went off to war as a man, he was proving his valor and strength on boar hunts. But this boar hunt did not go as smoothly as he would have liked, and he was gravely injured by the tusks of a wild boar during the hunt. Fortunately, he survived, but he received a large scar on his knee from this accident. If we fast forward many years later, Odysseus is finally coming home from the Trojan War. However, the Trojan War lasted 10 years, and because of various troubles along his way home, it took Odysseus another 10 years after the end of the war to get home. So he's been away for 20 years at this point. That's a long time. And he wears a disguise on his eventual return because he's been away so long, he wants to test the people in his home city and his palace and see if they're still loyal to him. So the disguise is working and no one recognizes him at first and he's welcomed into the palace as a stranger and as a guest. As part of the hospitality, a nurse helps him bathe and dress in fine clothes after his long journey. But this nurse had raised Odysseus as a child, and while helping him dress, she recognizes his distinct scar on his knee that he received in his failed boar hunt. So, oh no, the boar tusk scar ruined his disguise and revealed his identity. Look how similar the rearing boar on this coin is to our bronze boar figurine. They both have that similar charging stance, which some of you noticed earlier on, and their bristles also stick up from their back in two distinct sections. But wild boars have a counterpart. 
the domesticated pig. Pigs were part of everyday life in ancient Greece, involved in farming and food production and even religion. Pigs were closely associated with the Greek goddess Demeter, who was the goddess of grain and agriculture. And so pigs were associated with healthy harvests and fertility. Many terracotta or clay figurines of pigs were dedicated in sanctuaries to the goddess. And in my opinion, these pigs are a lot cuter uh, and a bit less ferocious than their wild counterpart. But how do these pig figurines look either different or similar to you compared with the wild boar we started with? Go ahead and write your thoughts and observations in the chat. Lots of great observations again. Um, Jack is noticing that there are no tusks, um, but Claire noticed that they seem to have the same snout. Um, the pigs look a little bit chubbier, but still have the same snout. Um, these pigs don't seem to have the distinctive bristle um, like the boars have. Yeah, everyone is a master looker. Amazing mm -hmm. observations, everyone. Yeah, they're a little bit fatter. They're a little bit more static. They're not really charging. This guy in the center is even, uh, you know, sitting down. Um, their bristles are less emphasized. Um, amazing observations, everyone. Um, but we can still see, like we saw, they have the same snout. They're sort of in the same family of animals. Um, so not completely different, but um, th these are great observations. Um, as sad as it is, pigs were also eaten in the ancient world, just like we do today. The ancient Greeks often used pigs when performing religious sacrifice, and the pig was placed on an altar and offered to the gods, and then the Greeks had a big communal feast. Through this ritual, not only did they have a celebratory meal, the Greeks believed they could become closer to their gods and even speak with the gods through this ritual. The pig, interestingly enough, was an animal used in ancient Greek purification rites or cleaning rituals. Even though we might think of pigs as messy and muddy, um, the Greeks believed that pigs could help you purify yourself from a stain or a sin on your character. People could even develop close emotional bonds with pigs. And we could even say that pigs became people's friends. Here we see a marble gravestone for pigs set up by a pig's human owner. The gravestone recalls how this pig was accidentally run over by a wagon on the way to a market and unfortunately died. The pig's owner bought this stone and set it up in honor of the pig's memory. If you look closely, you might be able to see Greek letters filling the space on the stone. These are, this is a poem written in Greek for the pig and you can see an English translation on the slide. The poem reads, a pig, friend to everyone, a four-footed youngster, here I lie. By the force of the wheel, I have now lost the light. Um, and this is explaining how this pig um, was accidentally run over by a cart and now uh, will pass on to the afterlife uh, for pigs. Um, and this bittersweet poem demonstrates the truly strong connection that people could have with animals. Can you spot the pig on this gravestone? I'll reveal its location in three, two, and one. There it is, indicated by the red circle. And you can see the wagon, unfortunately, on top that maybe was the cause of the pig's demise. But this gravestone is very sweet in a way. And I invite you to think about all the relationships you have with animals in your life. Um, and so even though ancient Greeks lived a long time ago, uh, they still have you know, similar relationships that we have today. And so thank you so much for joining us today.
I hope you have enjoyed this exploration of the wild boar and domesticated pig in Greece. The two clearly played a large part in people's lives from informing their mythology and hunting as a rite of passage to religious rites and forming close animal relationships. If you would like to learn more about the Greek hero Heracles and the other ferocious and magical creatures that he fights and interacts with during his labors, keep an eye out for a follow-up email which will show you how to explore representations of his adventures in the Harvard Art Museum's collection. And if you'd like to continue your creature feature, uh, join us for our next one on May 1st. And I guess we can maybe answer one or two questions if people have any. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, for everyone who might like to attend the talk on May 1st, I'm popping the link into the chat to our calendar listing. We'll also send this out to you via email. Um, we do have time for maybe uh, one or two questions. Um, and we're so grateful to you all for, for joining us on Zoom this morning. Um, Sarah, I did see one question earlier in the talk, um, which was whether we know what part of Greece this particular bronze wild boar was found. That's a great question. Um, we don't know what particular part of Greece this uh, bronze boar was found. Unfortunately, uh, many objects that are acquired um, very early on in the collection's history uh, don't have the best what we call provenance or understanding where this object came from. But we always try to do research to find out uh, better understandings of where things came from, um, especially now when we uh, acquire objects in the museum. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. This was great fun. Um, and and I learned a lot and loved sort of all of the stories that you told. And I think um, I think I speak for everyone and I say thank you for telling us about hogs and heroes in ancient Greece. Um, so thank you all for joining us. We hope we'll see you on May 1st and for other online programs at the Harvard Art Museum soon. And have a great rest of your day.